I'll make this point quickly on, on the Cubs. We think of them as being somewhat of an obvious seller, at least nationally, that's been our interpretation. They've got a better than 30% chance of making the playoffs, according to baseball reference, and in, in the most recent odds that they've calculated. This is the Cubs you're talking about. This is the Cubs, now. which is actually four times higher than the notably still-on-the-fence Angels about Otani. Hmm. So, objectively speaking, again, based on the numbers, if you look at baseball reference, which does a very good job of looking at objective analysis on their methodology behind this, the Cubs have four times the chance of making the playoffs than Shohei Otani's team does. And I, I, I happen to think that Stroman, of the two big trade candidates we talk about with the Cubs, that Stroman has a better chance of being moved than Bellinger because everybody needs a starting pitcher. It, it, most contenders do. I counted today, and I ran this by some people, at least seven or eight teams are involved in looking at rental starters like Stroman. Whereas with Bellinger, has to be the right fit. Who needs a, who needs a center fielder? Who would, who would prefer a left-handed bat or at first base? And He's I, been so good, He's though. been so good. He's been so, I, I mean, he's good enough, Danny, to your point, that you probably make room for him. He's that good. Yeah. But like the Phillies, for example, they want a bat, but they've got Harper and Schwarber from the left side. It's a question then of who, who's going to spend the assets to bring in a player if he's not necessarily a perfect fit. But I agree. Bellinger has played well enough that you make room in your lineup for him. What? So we were trying to like guess the contracts game because Cubs fans really want Bellinger to come back, and yeah. I'm a Cubs fan who really wants Bellinger uh, to come back. Will Cody Bell, and he's pacing for like nearly a six win season yeah. and without playing a full season. Uh would will Cody Bellinger get more or less than the seven one seventy seven that Dansby Swanson got? Wow. That's a great question. I think a little bit I think less in years because he hasn't been as durable as Dansby. Dansby posts for the most part. And certainly he has he's had some injuries. So my guess was six one fifty. Yeah. And Boris Client, typically Scott, finds a way to get one extra year and a couple extra million on the AAV from what you think. I think that's a reasonable guess. I mean, it's amazing to think that that's right around the range of what Baez got from Detroit. And obviously that contract has not worked out for the Tigers. But it's when you're a deluxe position player who can defend the way that Cody does and can hit for power. I mean, he's he's unique. I mean, he's he's someone who probably will appear on some NL MVP ballots. Oh top yeah. Ten, but the top way, 10 players in the league. I think that that's, he certainly is trending in that direction and it's, it's been a sensational year. And I think Danny, that those numbers, I, I would just say a little bit of a tick lower than Dansby because you don't have quite as much of a multi-year platform of, of really strong production. And I think there are probably still some people in the industry, a little concerned about the shoulder just based on, the history there. I mean, obviously, he's, he's gone to the post this year and done well, but I think that the memory of of the Dodgers just trying to figure out how to get him productive for a couple of years, really. Yeah, I, I think that that memory still lingers a bit. Yeah, he signed a one year prove it deal and now right. has proven has it. Has proven it, but that doesn't mean you get the full tilt boogie that you might have got if you were a stud the whole way. Right. So, it, 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 but he's playing like a superstar. We brought this up to Jed Hoyer. This possibility of. Trading him if need be here at the deadline and then bringing him back. Sure. And, you know, we talked about Ricky Henderson and Steve Carsey and uh, Jed brought up Aroldis Chapman and Jason Hamill. So right. like, there are players where that has happened. Would Boris be open to that kind of thing? Would Boris be open to conversations right now about a contract extension if the Cubs wanted to keep him or is Boris just going to send him to free agency to get the highest bidder? Right. It's a really important question. I think number one, I'd be stunned if there was an extension this week. I think everything we've seen in Scott's history is once you get this close, you're going to free agency. Uh, I think that's, that's his approach and that I would expect about 99% sure that that will remain his approach uh, with Bellinger uh, in terms of, in terms of trading him and then signing him back. It's interesting because uh, by the CBA, that's a conversation that you can't necessarily have by hmm. rule. Um, but I, I think that we can see, and you could just see honestly in his body language and the way he's presented himself here in Chicago, he does like it here. He's happy. He's happy here. And I think that getting out of LA was good. Uh, he didn't have to live up to the MVP hype any longer. He just had to play. And you can tell he has been reinvigorated by this town in a way that I think Cubs fans should be proud of. 
and the organization should be proud of that, that they've created a, an atmosphere where on and off the field, he feels really supported and, and empowered to be the, the player that he is right now. I think, I think it's been a great organizational triumph and those, that kind of comfort, I guess to take a step back, we forget, and maybe it's just hard for any anybody to really conceptualize, unless you're a professional athlete, certainly, and I'm not. Um, Are you sure? <laughs> is is how hard it must be to be great, and he was objectively a great player, and then struggle profoundly for years, and then regain your identity. You're now Cody Bellinger, all-star again, and you are walking tall. To then transition again after that and go somewhere else, I... I I think he's found a really good spot here and, and he's happy here. And, and I, I, I think and hope there could be a, a way to continue this for the long term, which is why I believe for many reasons, Stroman is more likely to have a new team by next week than Bellinger.